So this is the code that we had before where we were just logging out the, the data to, uh, this, to the laptop through the console command. There we go. All right, so as I get closer to ground and move this back and forth, it just shows us those values. All right, but it's useful rather than just to use console log, and if we're not using the lights for anything else, um, rather than just using that, I like to do uh, graph. So graph is neat because it also then turns the NeoPixel into a dynamic bar graph. So we can essentially do the same thing here, um, but just graph it. And now uh, that's like console log, but then also uses the, the NeoPixel. So. Perfect. All right. So there we go. So now you see that the NeoPixel, if I'm towards ground, there's only a one light. But then as I get closer and closer to 3 volts and then all the way up to 3.3, .3, all the lights turn on on the NeoPixels. All right. Perfect. So let's just do the same thing. I'm going to unhook our lo-fi potentiometer or variable resistor. And I'm going to hook it up now to our potentiometer an actual potentiometer. So this is a three prong potentiometer and I'm going to put the 3.3 volt connection on the outer leg on the left. And I'm going to put the ground connection, which just came out of my CPX. So I've got to reconnect it on the outer leg on the right. And then I'm going to put the yellow just like that. Now you make sure when you are hooking these up with alligator clips that you don't have the wires touch themselves. All right, so now I've got to turn the, the graph back on. And ooh, there we go. So I guess it's hard to see. Now as I turn the knob, it dynamically changes the analog input. Pretty cool. So again, remember, that's what a joystick is made out of, like your, your game pads for uh, the PlayStation or other things. So let me just pull up the wiring diagram. Just make sure that you have the middle prong of your potentiometer is hooked up to yellow, which is the wiper. That's what gets variable resistance. And then the outer left edge is 3.3 volts and the right one is is ground. Um, and I do have, I believe, a website open. This is uh, our MakeAbility Lab physical computing website. And I think it does go into, if not here. So it, it goes into these soundboards. I think it also shows a picture of, yeah, so there you go, of, of the joysticks. Um, perfect. So that is a rotary potentiometer. Um, and we can do the same thing. We could just hook up, I'll open up make code again. We can just hook up the slide potentiometer as well. It's a slide potentiometer. And I have the wiring diagram for that too. There we go. So and I actually put labels on these as well. So where there's the single leg, that's where you do V in. I'm going to do it, I guess, like this. And then the wiper goes over here and ground goes over here. Again, just make sure that those alligator clips don't touch. And then as you slide it all the way to the 3.3 .3 volt and then back down. Ooh. Ooh. Awesome. Perfect. 
All right. So maybe the final thing to talk about is something like these two-legged resistive sensors, OK? If you just hook this up, one yellow and one red, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Instead, you've got to turn this two-prong sensor into a three-prong sensor. Um, and I've already done that, but essentially, you just need to go get a 10K resistor, which we have in which we have in the lab and in the studio. Um, I have a little pack here, so it says 10K. And I'm just gonna show you very quickly how to do this in a lo-fi, quick prototype -y way. This one I made and I actually soldered the connections just so it was more, more clear and I'll, I'll bring it into class. But how can we convert this two prong into a three prong? Well, actually the way that we're going to do it is We're going to have this hooked up to the red wire. Oh, I guess you can't really see it. There you go. This is going to be hooked up to the red wire. And then we're going to have a resistor here. It's pretty light. Let's see if I can use a different color. We're going to put a, a fixed resistor there, in this case a 10K. And we're going to hook that up to the ground connection on the CPX. This goes to the 3.3 volts. And then before that resistor, that's where we're going to hook up. That's going to go to A1. All right. So for this particular example, um, it's probably easiest if you have a force sensitive resistor or a pressure sensor like this to, uh, to solder the wire, to solder the resistor. But I'm actually just going to try to wrap it. Just for the purposes of this demo. I'm just going to wire wrap like that. Oh boy, it fell out already. Didn't do it strong enough. And if you had a pliers, you could kind of squeeze that down. All right. So there's the resistor. And what we're going to do is we're going to have the red, the yellow go to A1. the red, and then the black. Oh, my yellow fell off again. Just make sure that nothing is touching. My red is pretty close to my black. OK, so uh, there is exactly like, I hooked it up exactly like this little diagram. And now if I push down on it, oh, you can't see it, but now if I push down, it provides variable resistance. And so it's, it's actually the same, we can do the same thing with the light sensor. If I can find it, here's a light sensor. So just get a 10K resistor again. This is a pack of 10K resistors that says 10K. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing here where this part goes up to red. This part, we're gonna wire wrap a, a resistor.
like that. Okay, so we're going to put ground on the bottom of the resistor, yellow, which is A1 in that middle part, and then 3.3 volts here. And then if I cover the light, you can see that you get a dip in the voltage. It's pretty bright in this room right now, but if I cover it, I immediately see a response. I'm just trying to make it as dark as I can. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so that's how you deal with those two-legged variable resistors, which is like these light sensors or these pressure sensors, or it could be these soft or the soft potentiometers are three legs. Oh, the flex sensors. It's the same thing with the flex sensor, which I guess I could do next. It's the same basic thing. Take the flex sensor, and you can take a, another 10K resistor. I just pulled it off this pack. And then wire wrap it on that leg. It's not there's not much to wire wrap there. It's a it's a smaller leg. Did not do a good job of that. Let me try the other side. Oh no, I was just going to say it should be good enough for now. Again, if you have a pliers, you can kind of squeeze it together. And unless you have a soldering iron, you can make a more permanent connection. Again, trying to make sure that they're not touching. Um, and now if I bend it, you can see you get change in that analog signal. Pretty cool. All right, awesome. So that is hooking up to resistive sensors. Um, the next, I'm going to show you how to use this to translate and build a mouse from the resistive sensors.